Sue, uh, a lot has been happening at TD. I know a lot of work on, on diversity, mm -hmm. uh, on inclusion, uh, but some of the other areas that we were uh, talking about earlier. Maybe um, if you could share with the audience some of the activities and, and, and I guess really best practices that uh, you're seeing over at um, TD and, mm -hmm. you're, and you're taking a leadership role, obviously. Yeah. Well, sure, thank you. Uh, and again, thank you. And I'm delighted to have this opportunity to tell you a little bit about the work that we have ongoing at, at TD. So I'm going to really uh, focus on two key thematic areas and, and really pick up on uh, a couple of the points that Heather made uh, in her comments. So I'll center my remarks around what we're doing on the talent and leadership strategy uh, and agenda in particular and then segue into talking a little bit about the HR transformation journey that I and my function uh, embarked upon within TD Bank. Um, but first to talk about uh, talent and leadership and maybe just to state an obvious point, um, at TD Bank, we're in the people business. We don't really produce anything tangible that you can touch or, or pick up. Um, so our business is all about enabling the financial dreams of our customers and clients. That might sound a bit hokey, but you know, for somebody saving hard and wanting to purchase their first home or saving for a healthy, happy retirement or putting their kids through college and university, those are very real dreams and, and aspirations. And we have a very simple philosophy, therefore, that more highly engaged employers, employees actually uh, create um, more satisfied and stickier customers and clients. And that's good for business, and therefore that's good for our shareholders. And so it really is a win-win-win strategy, and it all starts with having the very best people and the very best talent in, in every one of our positions. It follows, therefore, that you know, our talent strategy per se is actually quite straightforward. Um, but like most um, simple and effective strategies, actually it really is all about the execution and the implementation. So we're about identifying, attracting, developing, deploying and retaining a very diverse uh, pool of talented individuals across the enterprise uh, and enabling them to really realize their highest potential. We want to create a bench of agile, versatile leaders, not only to meet TD's needs as a business today, but to meet, um, meet the business needs into the future. We've been around for about 158 uh, years. We intend to be around for another 158 years. So that means uh, there's still some work to do on this talent agenda. Uh, and it's a long-term game. We need to work the talent agenda consistently and rigorously. Uh, and we can't ever become complacent that you know we're done with that job. Um, again, as Heather mentioned, and I can tell you from the TD experience, we've just gone through um, what I believe was a, a very well managed and seamless CEO transition, which was imperative for our organization. And what I can also tell you is that Virtually, if not in actual fact, day one of our new CEO's tenure, Barrett Mezrani, he is already focused, thinking, and working his own succession plan. And I can assure you the board and the HRC demand that of him. So that's, that's very real. Um, as Heather mentioned, mentioned again, we too are very mindful of how the talent landscape is, is changing around us. Whilst we do have you know, a more educated um, population entering the supply side of the, uh, the workforce, not all the disciplines are represented uh, as equally as we might like. For instance, maths and science graduates are at a very low proportion. And when you think about some of the new entrants into our industry, the likes of the apples of this world, the Facebooks of this world, getting into the payments and the financial services industry, you know, the very um, talents and disciplines and capabilities that we need are potentially in shortest supply. So that talent is definitely uh, scarce for sure. Our population writ large, as we've been saying, is more diverse these days. It's also multi-generational. All of these have implications for how we think about managing, developing, growing our talent and our leaders of the future. And of course, there is the pace of change. Going head to head with the likes of the Apples and the Googles and the Facebooks, how do we as a financial institution become much more innovative 
and at pace. That's maybe typically not what we've been good at. That hasn't been one of our strong suits. So we're thinking uh, and trying to be more creative and find ways of introducing more innovation, learning how to test things, try things out fast, fail with a few and then move on. Um, so we really do need to understand these implications and apply them into our work around talent. Uh, from an HR perspective, we're the enablers of this very important uh, uh, talent agenda, but I can assure you the CEO and our senior executive team are consistently working that plan, and there is very robust oversight by the HR committee and indeed the board itself. So we have a number of things that we're trying to do. We stay very focused on creating actionable development plans for our talent. Again, as Heather said, we too absolutely need to dive deeper into our population, assess our talent earlier, and again, make sure that they're having the critical experiences as they move and work across different areas of our organization so that we can truly grow them to be our future leadership. We also um, uh, pay a lot of attention to finding ways of having our board and HRC members interact so that they get not only the words on the page and the numbers and the measures and the outcome, but they really get to know uh, our top and uh, upcoming talent. Through various means, we uh, provide interaction sessions, deep dives on businesses, and potentially sometimes less formal um, opportunities for them to interact. And I think we'll come back to it later, Don, but you know, it is so important that not only in a qualitative way, but in a more quantitative way, we really measure whether you know, we're doing the right work in this space and we're having the kind of um, effective outcomes from a talent perspective that, uh, that we need to have for the business. So that really leads me to talk a little bit about uh, the function of HR and as uh, Heather said, uh, uh, making the point that potentially HR uh, needs a makeover. I intend to make sure that TD's HR function is one of those 30% where the CEO and the senior team would be saying, yes, we are getting the expert advice and, and guidance that we need from this function. Um, we have uh, embarked at the end of two, 2013 on a, on a three-year, really, um, transformation journey. Um, we have three main goals uh, in doing that. One, very much to strengthen the capability and capacity within the HR function so that we can most effectively and efficiently meet those current and future business goals and needs and particularly focus our time and attention on the most impactful work uh, and talent is a big part of that. We want to en enhance our employee experience. Uh, going back to my point before, we are in a people business. This makes business sense. We need to be set up to do that. Uh, and so what we want to do in this multi-generational new world in which we are living these days, we want to provide different mechanisms and ways that all of our employee base, whether they're junior employees, whether they're middle managers, whether they're our senior leaders, can interact with our function, can find the information uh, that they need and get the critical advice that they need to uh, really move their business forward. And finally, we need to deliver uh, our services much more effectively and mitigate some of our uh, fixed cost and find ways to free up uh, investment dollars so that we can invest in our future um, and our function as a result of that. Um, we had a number of drivers of, for change. Um, uh, I w you know, Heather's comments do indeed resonate with me. Uh, we'd grown to be um, uh, unsustainable and non-scalable in the way that uh, our legacy systems were set up. We'd customized them over time, uh, and therefore we couldn't be as agile in moving and making changes as the business needs continue to change. Um, our cost and time to deliver uh, was definitely suboptimal. We had a very distributed HR model, uh, and we had very limited analytics and insights to really inform the most proactive uh, and impactful work. Uh, and again, make sure that we're supporting those critical business decisions in the right way. Uh, additionally, we identified some capability gaps of our own, just as we uh, uh, work with the business to uh, identify their gaps and really uh, set about to uh, really stand up uh, an operating model where we could truly meet these more complex um, requirements from the business. 
Our up outcomes will be that we will have uh, a number of different mechanisms, um, much better self-service tools, contact centers, advice and guidance, uh, helplines for people to call, as well as having very competent HR professionals who can provide that strategic value-added guidance uh, at the senior levels of the organization. Um, we are uh, deploying much more effective systems and tools and really working hard to streamline and scale our operational processes. And finally, um, uh, you know, we need to pay attention to the way we do our work. Um, there is huge people risk from a reputation standpoint um, in ensuring that we have all of our employees doing the right things in the right way at the right time. And so through our transformation efforts, we will also enhance the governance uh, around the way we do our work. So I think um, with that, I'd uh, leave it there for now. And uh, again, would um, be happy to come back to any of these points in uh, ensuing conversation. So Sue, um, uh, obviously uh, a lot uh, happening. Uh, I think a lot of takeaways in terms of best practices uh, at uh, TD Bank. One, one thing that really resonated with me, it, it's a long-term journey. You need to stay right. on, the, on the path. You need to make investment. And, and by the way, when times get tough, I think an important issue for, for the board and the HR committee is to make sure this is a strategic investment and it doesn't, uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't get 